Assalamu alaikum and this is a Fahad Liyagin Musa video and this time the topic of the video is partnership. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe to the channel this time and we will be having amazing videos of economics, accounting and business study and now we will be introducing the sequence of partner studies lectures and slam ads hopefully. So do subscribe to the channel so that you could get the earliest update as soon as possible. So let's, let us start with today's video which is partnership. So partnership is a topic which is of utmost importance. And this is the most favorite topic of an examiner in A levels. But again, there are a lot of times where the examiner is asking you questions of partnership in O levels accounting too. So we'll be starting from the very scratch, a very basic concept where the, where the term partnership will be introduced. Partnership means that two till 20 members can work together as a partner and they can pool in their resources where they have, where they are just trying their level best to start a business. When we talk about the sole trader, so, sole trader is a business which is run by one person. So, again, a one person would have limited finance. That person would be, uh, would not be able to just uh, uh, look after everything in the business. So, again, it will be a problem for that person. So, what happens? We go for the second form of business organization, which is partnership. So, two till 20 people can be partners with each other. Each other. Okay. And these partners just uh, fund the capital. They just fund the capital and in the end what happens uh, when they are funding the capital. So they are just uh, getting the benefit from the partnership and they are also there to uh, just suffer the losses, just bear the losses if the partnership is suffering from any loss. So there are certain advantages and disadvantages of being in a partnership. So let's write it down. Uh, these advantages and disadvantages, first advantage is that more capital. More capital uh, if we compare it with the type of business organization which is sole trader. If you are a sole trader, you would not have enough capital for yourself. So now this time you would have more capital, which is something good. The second thing is that you have you have unlimited library. That's that's a drawback again. I was about to write it in the advantage. This that's not an advantage. Second thing is that maybe there are certain skills, skill sets. Uh, if I talk about this thing, that maybe a partner is good in accounts. So he can manage the accounts and be partner is good in marketing. So, so again, they don't have to pay anyone from outside and uh, hire a person and then look after that person for these tasks. They can do it on their own. So this is something very good. Third thing is that, that they can look after by, when we can see this thing, when we see the uh, type of organization, which is sole trader, we observe this thing that sole trader, if he or she gets ill, ill, or any one particular day. So what, what will happen? We will not be able to run the business. But this time, if one partner is absent, if one partner is absent, then the other can take over. Partner is absent, then the other can, then the other can take over. Okay. So there are more advantages you can think of, but again, I've given three only over here. So I'll just uh, change this for so that this should look right. Okay. Okay. Just moving forward to the disadvantage. The biggest disadvantage, which was, which was there in Soul Trader 2, which is unlimited liability. Uh, remember this thing, unlimited liability. I give this type of example in the classes a lot of times that unlimited liability means that maybe you are, you've taken a loan of, let's suppose $20,000 from a business. And whenever we are teaching accounting, something which is great is that we talk about dollars a lot of time. And that gives us a feeling that we are a rich person, that's something great. Uh, $20,000, uh, you have taken a loan. And when you have taken a loan of $20,000, maybe after some time, uh, you're not pay, you're not able to pay the loan. Your partnership business has been shut down. Uh, you're not able to pay the loan. Once you're not able to pay the loan, so your, your creditors, the people who have given you the loan, they will not say that that's okay. Or you cannot, you cannot pay the loan. So that's, there is no problem. No, they will come to you. They will ask you for the loan. And if you're not able to repay the loan, maybe you are just uh, relaxing at your home uh, on any one fine day. They can they can come at your home, then ask you to sell your car. They can ask you to sell your home. They can ask you to sell your personal belongings to give them the amount which is you. In short, if I tell you this thing, unlimited liability means that liability of your loan is not limited to the amount you have invested. It means if your business is not able to pay $20,000 after it is being sold, then you have to pay it by from your personal belongings. And why this is the rule? The reason is that because you and your business, they are considered the same in the eyes of law. The law says if your business has taken the loan, it means you have taken the loan. 
And again, it cannot be vice versa that you have taken a loan and your business has to pay it. No, it cannot be vice versa. But if you if your business has taken a loan, so you you means the both the partners uh, they have to pay the loan. Unlimited liability is the biggest disadvantage which comes in our mind when we are talking about the partnership and sole trader. The second point is that if one of the partners die. If one of the partners die, God forbid, if one of the partners die, one of the partners die, then the partnership will end. Okay, then the partnership will end. And now there is no question at this stage because if you are asking a question, then you need to think about this thing that when two persons are going for a partnership, one of the persons dies. So again, the partnership is not there. The partnership has ended. And if, if the partnership has ended, then you have to just uh, go through for the agreement again so that you could continue with the partnership thing. Third thing is that maybe a lot of times I've heard this from the students that if one of the partners is dishonest, if one of the partners is dishonest, is dishonest, then you might also suffer. Again, uh, if you if you have given the responsibility. Uh, to look after to partner A and partner A is dishonest. He or she is not showing sales of ten thousand dollars and he has stolen some amount from your uh, from from your business. So you could not track that until unless you track that down, you just get get to know about that thing. Maybe you might have suffered a lot of, a, a huge loss at that stage. So this is something bad in partnership, and that is the reason people don't go for the partnership type of business because they observe this thing that when there is a loss. Uh, and the partner is dishonest, so again they have to pay it from their own personal belongings. Maybe the partner is stealing some amount from your business, and in the end the partnership is suffering from loss. So again, that that partner who is stealing, he will be in the benefit, but you will be in a loss at that stage. So these were the advantages and disadvantages of partnership. Now the next thing, which is very important, is the agreement. Remember one thing in all of us accounting, double seven zero seven, we always observe this thing that there are certain pointers given by the examination in the question. Your question will tell you certain things that what is the interest on capital. Okay. Maybe the question will say that interest on capital is this. The question will tell you what is the interest on drawings. What is the salary being paid to one of the partners? Maybe one of the partner is the accountant of the firm. So if partner a and partner b they both agree that part they both have agreed mutually that partner a will be carrying out the duties of a, of an accountant so again they would have to pay something to the partner a so salary of partner a will be dispersed from the business and then we have uh, interest on drawing salary bonus and a lot of things in the end we come for the appropriation part where we distribute the profit which is the less leftover things after leftover profit after everything has been done this is given to a and b uh, the profit sharing ratio is always given in the question uh, in the books if you read this topic so uh, you would observe this thing that the question and the book is saying that if there is no partnership agreement then you have to go for uh, equal partner e equal profit sharing ratio um, then uh, you have to go for that but again uh, in the old OS history there hasn't been a question about this that the profit sharing ratio has not been given by the examination examiner but if the examiner can do if the examiner does this thing in the examination so be prepared for that just remember the rules of partnership agreement if the agreement is not given in the question if there is no agreement what will you do in that situation so you just you just need to remember this thing very well uh, if you are very good in income statement if I write it down, if you are very good in income statement topic, which have a prerequisite of three topics, which is you need to be good in bad debts, you need to be good in depreciation, you need to be good in accruals and prepayment. Okay, so if you are good in these three topics, so you should practice normal uh, income statement. What do I mean by the normal income statement? Normal income statement means sole trader income statement. If you are good in this topic. So there is a high chance that you will be able to grasp, you will be able to just uh, do good in this partnership topic. And in the next video, we'll go for the partnership questions, how the appropriation is made, which is something different and how the current accounts are made. Okay. How the capital accounts are made. Sometimes the examiner is asking you to go for goodwill is not to be maintained in the books. So what should we do? Should we write the goodwill? Should we not write the goodwill? What should we do? How should we? allocate the goodwill in the question so just stay tuned for the next video 
haven't subscribed do subscribe the channel i hope you have subscribed it now like the video share it and comment if there is any question do like my facebook page which is fahad ali and support me by subscribing it okay thank you for watching.